Here is Jesus' prayer request to the Father at the very end. Here's what he says. Holy Father, protect them, these 12 guys, by the power of your name, the name that you gave me so that. In other words, here is the purpose of the protection. Here's specifically how I want you to protect them. Now, the interesting thing is he's already given them some bad news. Okay, guys, here's the future. Here's what your future looks like. You're gonna be arrested, flogged and beaten. Some of you are gonna be killed. That's your future. Oh, great, wish you told us that early on. I know I kind of held back because I knew you wouldn't follow me. But anyway, that's, that's your future, but now they're, they're in, right? But here he is praying that God would protect them and he's not praying for their physical protection. He's praying for something he thinks is more important than their physical protection. That they may be, here it is, Holy Father, protect them by the power of your name, the name you gave me so that they may be, this is his one prayer request. Here is what he wanted protected more than anything else. That they may be one as we are one. At the very end, the thing that Jesus was most concerned about was their unity and their oneness. Because here's what he knew, and here's what he's gonna say in the next few verses. He knew that as long as they were in lockstep together and in lock, lockstep with his heavenly father, the world would change. But if they ever got divided and splintered, things would stall out. Then in verse 20, skipping down, if you're following along, he prays for you and he prays for me and he prays for us. This is amazing. My prayer, he says, is not for them alone, not just these 12 guys. I pray also, I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message. In other words, that next generation of Christians and the next generation of Christians and the next generation of Christians leading all the way up to us. And what do you think he prays for us? And the answer is not what we pray for us. In fact, here's something that's really sad. I mean, it's convicting to me. My hunch is virtually none of us who consider ourselves Jesus followers, virtually none of us have ever asked God for what Jesus asked God for. Virtually none of us have ever prayed the prayer that Jesus prayed even though he modeled it and clearly this was so close to his heart and so important to him in those final hours, which may be the problem because as we're gonna discover, Maybe if the church, maybe if people like me have been begging God for this, leading toward this, pleading toward this, the world would be a different and better place. My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message, that all of them, all of them in the first century that meant Jew and Gentile and rich and poor and slaves and freemen and military leaders and soldiers and tax gatherers and those from whom the taxes were gathered and the educated and the uneducated, everybody. In the 21st century, it means Republicans and Democrats, the privileged, the not so privileged, the independent, the indecisive, the libertarians, the librarians, you know, the black and brown and white and beige, privileged, married, single. In other words, all of us, that all of the people who call me Lord, no matter where they're from, what they've experienced, or how good life has treated them, or how poorly life has treated them, connected, disconnected. I pray that all of them in this vast array, this extraordinary dispersion of people with different experiences, I pray that somehow all of them, this is amazing, may be one. 